Okay. I think we will begin. Should be right about eight o'clock right now. Okay, everybody, thank you for joining us on the Junior Dragster webinar. Hopefully this will go off without any problems this week. We've had some technical difficulties with the internet the last couple of times. We tried this, but it looks like this one's good. So we'll be get, we'll get started. There are some files on the on your uh, screen that you can download also that are the five steps and the webinar handout. You can ask questions. From time to time, I'll stop when appropriate and answer them. I'm sure you guys will have questions. There's quite a few of you here. So we'll get started. The first thing that a lot of people don't realize is you can change the pictures on the run in, on the picture screen here just by double clicking them. You can put whatever you want. It'll cycle through them. Uh, those of you are familiar with it on the left hand side, I always like to make sure the car's going that way. And on the right hand side, if possible, make them go to the right. So we'll press enter to start. Again, this is a junior dragster webinar, but it will cover similar things to the big cars, constantly uh, changing both of them. But what we find on either version also is inherited on uh, the next release. So when we make a change to the big car version, it also improves the junior version and vice versa. First thing I want to go over is those of you that have a big car and a junior, uh, you don't need to run the junior version. You can run the big car version and it won't affect anything. The only difference on the big car and the junior version is data entry screen on the right hand side here has some clutch weights, ramps, driven helix, shift RPM, spring hole, sprockets, total weight, uh, you know, and that kind of stuff that is different. But the basic screen is still the same. So if you have big car version, that's fine. If you want to run just the junior version, then all you have to do is go up to the setup menu here on the upper left. I'll circle that, drop the setup menu down, and go to change data entry screens here. And that will allow you to pick the junior version from that list. You'll reboot the computer, and then it'll look like this. Uh, the way you can definitely tell that the junior version is up and running, of course, is the lay or this uh, graphic at the top middle says Crew Chief Junior. It's got the GR right there. Again, it really doesn't matter which version you use. The databases control everything. So uh, what we're going to cover is what we'd like to see you guys learn. We're going to cover some new features. We're going to demonstrate how these new features work to help you in both your data entry and the data integrity, which is really important to me. We're going to look into and determine weather variables and their effects on elapsed time. I'll walk you through experimenting with factors and formulas for best results. And we're going to go through each formula and tell you how it works and why. We're going to go over calculate ratios, setting up databases, switching between runs, searching, comparing, and verifying predictions. Uh, my name is Don Higgins. For those of you who don't know it, I started this company 33 years ago. I had two juniors for a long, long time. It's one of the reasons I have no hair. So I realized after a great length of time that they don't respond like a big car. On average, they're actually about darn near backwards of a big car. So I've had to rewrite the software in order to allow what we call negative factors, where the car gets faster as the air gets worse kind of thing. So what we're going to go through is I have a customer who's been nice enough to give us our their data and I'm going to cycle through it and then go through things that we see here that we can improve upon. So this version in Crew Chief is the newest version that is not out yet. 
it will be out tomorrow and it has some important wind factor changes as we found a few things in the wind factoring that uh, I could approve on. The version number is always in the top right, easiest way to find it. It's also up here in the top middle, but a lot of people don't see it up there. But it's 2022-02-23-A7 is this version that will probably be the version that will be uh, available tomorrow morning, maybe even late tonight. I've still got a couple of things I want to check on it. So, all right. So let's get into the most important place I want to start with, and that is databases. So the database menus are up here at the top. Those of you that are unfamiliar with Crew Chief software, the database, these menus at the top called File, Setup, Search, those are menus. When I tell you to go to the databases menu, that's where that circle is at the top middle. If I instead tell you to go to the Predict tab, Predict ET, Predict Ballast, or Predict whatever it says, these are tabs tabs like run entry tab, car setup tab, opponent information, don't forget opponents. That opponent information is a very important area. Run completion, if you're on the brakes or lift. Predict screen, which we'll spend a lot of time in today. Weather graphs is where you can graph the weather. See, for those of you that have trailer weather stations, you can see every minute of the day, every reading and graph everything. Finish line manager, another very important area, which will tell you how close the race should be before you run somebody. So we're gonna to go to the databases menu at the top of the screen because databases are, under, are misunderstood many times. So we're gonna click on that. And this customer has quite a few databases. It's not normally necessary to have this many, but again, there's nothing wrong with it except for the program has to relearn a lot of things. So the proper way to set up a database is once you have a good working database, it's much simpler. You'll simply just double click on one of these to copy it. That's why it, it's blinking on the left-hand side, it says double click to select a database. There's a particular way that we want you to do this. And double clicking tells the program that you are interested in not only editing, but possibly copying one database to the next. So for example, we have this database, which we're, we will be using here in a minute. And I wanna make a copy of it, for example. So what you do is you double click that database if it's a good working one. If you're just starting out on it, it doesn't much matter. You're gonna to have to teach the program one way or another. But once you get going with this database, it's a good idea to make new ones as you need to. For example, I make one whenever the track is different. We have a local track in Illinois that has right and left lanes that are a little bit weird. And the ETs are always quicker at that track than they are at other tracks. So I make a database for that particular track. Now this customer also has one that I see here, the uh, Tulsa or Bristol ECF. You know, we, I think we made that in the last database actually, but Bristol is an uphill track and it does require a separate database. It's extremely slow there. So you'll want to have a database for Bristol and you will want to have one for each year you go because as your child gets bigger then uh, you know the previous databases may still work okay but you know the car may have changed enough where a new database is required so let's go over how to make a new one we have a good working one on the screen and we want to copy it so we double click there and when we do this field turns bright orange the database name field once that's in there and you say, okay, I want to copy this, what that means is I want to make a new database, but everything transfers over in the logic, not the runs, but all the prediction logic, all the factors, all the beginning setup areas transfer.
So we want to make this new database. Once we have this highlighted in orange, then and only then do you want to click the Start New Database in this button that I just put an arrow on. And watch what happens when we do this. We click Start New Database, and the database name turns to two stars. And the reason it turns to two stars is because I want to make sure you know the next thing you have to do is type in a new name. You don't have to click anywhere. It's already highlighted. The two stars are highlighted. Don't touch the mouse. Just start typing. So we'll type 2022. You know, let's just say uh, this neck, this track will be a Mockley. I don't remember how exactly how to type it in, but we're making a sample database, for example. And then I press the Enter key, and it, this, there's some missing information here, apparently. But so then I save it immediately. And the reason I save it is because I want to make sure that I didn't just overwrite the existing database. The one that we were copying from was right here. And the one we made is right there. So it's both of them are still there. The reason I bring this to your attention is because many customers do this and simply forget to click Start New Database where that arrow is in the top middle of the screen. And they've simply overwritten an existing database name with a new name. And they've they freak out because they can't find the existing database that was there. It's still there, just got changed. So that's why I spend particular amount of attention on this because I want to make sure you guys don't do that. So again, start new database in the top middle. Once you do that, you type in a new name, press enter, save it immediately, verify that they're correct, and then you can go back and edit this. So when I want to edit a database, all I have to do is click on it. And, I, and you'll notice the way I tell people to set up databases is to put the year first. That way they're all sorted in a nice order, easy to find. So now we can go through here and fix anything. So let's say that the driver weight with driver went from 407 to 417. Pretty common thing. Gear ratios didn't change. <clears throat> Excuse me, didn't change. So whether anything changes here, launch. So whether anything changes here, like launch RPMs or tire pressures, you can fix anything that needs to be fixed on this front screen. And then save it. Now, once you're done with the front screen, do not forget about these other two tabs that are up here. Tab, the second one in orange is called Setup Info, page two. And the next one is Change Picture and Factors. And you can change pictures for each database, which we highly recommend doing, especially if you have multiple cars. So we go to Setup Info, page two, and verify the information. So let's cover this real quick. Setup Info page two asks if you're going to use ballast to predict. Those of you that run 1190, 890, 790, whatever it is, you have to check this ballast predict if you want us to tell you how much weight we think you should use for the next run. When you do that, you also have to make sure in the top left that ballast calculation is checked. If you check ballast on the bottom or in the middle right area, we will check ballast calculation for you. Matter of fact, we will not allow you not to do this. So just remember, if the only ones juniors are, are gonna do is either not gonna use ballast. In that case, you will uncheck all of that and your screen would look like this. So I'm going to uncheck ballast and click no ballast only. Now this is an ET setup. That means you don't want us to predict how much weight. And so I'm going to circle ET only where it says no ballast ET only. If you have that selected, it will not predict ballast. If you say, oh, no, I want ballast prediction, it's up to you. If you want us to try to do that, that's fine. But as soon as I do that, 
It's going to say, are you sure? Say yes. It's going to check ballast calculation up on the upper left. And it's going to ask you what your ballast ratio is, which is this very important field if you're wanting us to calculate ballast for you. That is the ballast to ET ratio. In this particular case, it's coming up with, or we were going to probably start with 0.86 of a pound equals a hundredth. So just under a pound is a hundredth of a second is what that means. So once you get that started, if you're going to do that, choose the vehicle type for wind factors. There, all of your programs should have a junior dragster in here. If not, you can add one. In this case, this one has some sample stuff in it that doesn't have one. So we're going to click this add button right here. And those of you with multiple juniors, you can have different body types right there. So when we click Add Vehicle, we'll say, uh, I'm just going to call it John's Junior, you know, whatever you want to call it. So now it's John's Junior in there in the, in the body type, and that allows us to adjust wind factors for John's Junior and not screw up somebody else's. The next field you'll see down below is if those of you that have the time slip simulator option, you can select junior dragster out of that if you're running a junior. If you're running multiple cars, a junior and a small, a big car, then you can pick whatever you need to for each database. Those of you that don't know what time slip simulator is, we'll go over that. It's an option of like $80 a year, but it's pretty cool. And then the bottom right, we'll circle this area here. This is the horsepower correction factor index. It's a factor that we assign to get the proper amount of horsepower on the run entry screen. Most juniors are going to be anywhere from 170 to 177 in this field that's highlighted right now has 177 in it which is close enough for right now, but you could, the lower you go, the less power it will show on the run entry form. And then the, I'm gonna erase these drawings and go to the last one, which is change pictures and factors. So each database can have its own picture. So if you want, you'll click, if you have uh, images of your juniors in your computer somewhere, click where it says change picture, and then you'll double click where I draw this arrow. Anywhere in this box, double click and pick that image file. And then every time you enter a run with this database, it will use that picture. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So I'm gonna double click this, and I'm gonna go, my images are put in a graphics folder, but you can put whatever you want. And we'll just pick, uh, oh, we'll just pick a, an image here. I'll just pick my t-shirts and then save it. I'm going to erase the drawings and I'll explain what's going on here. So the, also on the run on this main uh, database setup screen, you'll finish filling out this information. Your dial in right here. Make sure you check eighth mile right there. And the rest kind of doesn't matter. You put in your, you know, your rear axle ratios, your starting RPMs, um, that kind of stuff right there in the middle. Fill that out and make sure you save it. So I'm going to click save. And then we're basically done here. Anything else you need to do, you know, you can do later. There's nothing wrong with keeping databases in there. There is a delete on the bottom of the screen there for if you no longer have a car and you want to delete not only the database, but every run associated with that. But be careful with that. It doesn't hurt anything to keep those runs in. I mean, all you it doesn't really take up that much space. So I'm going to exit on the bottom right of that and bring it back to the run entry form. And we're going to go through how to enter a run real quick, and then we're going to go over this 
particular person's drawing or his data and try to make sense of some of the runs and explain a couple of really important things here. So on the run entry screen, I want to go over this start new run button is only going to be used for runs that are today. Whatever day today is, that's how you start a new run when it's today's date. If it's an old date, all you do is put the date in and the run number for that day where these arrows are in the upper left. You don't need the start new run because what happens with start new run, let's click it and show you. It's going to change the date to today's date instantly, and it'll find that run number one is the next available run. If it's not today's date that you're wanting to enter, just type over the run date and type over the run number, and it will add a new run for you. Start new run is just for today's date. And so let's just put in a sample run just for giggles. I go down to time of day, it's 1230. See how I put the 12, a period in three zero. I don't need a colon. You don't need anything fancy. You don't need an AM or PM if it's a trailer weather station because it's going to fill all that in once it finds it. In this case, I don't have the weather station running, but it's going to try to find some weather from the next available time. So I'm just going to pick one. And when I do, in the upper right, it says crew chief successfully transferred the weather for you. Is that the coolest thing you've ever seen or what? but double check your weather readings. And then you'll notice that it filled in a PM in the time of day, because I picked from that time of day list. And in the middle of the screen, it filled in all of the weather. And on the bottom of the screen, it filled in every prediction it was making at that time what 60 foot was on the predict screen and what run was on the main entry screen when I went to predict. That's how you know it's pulled over the weather because not only will the weather be right, but all the predictions it was making on the bottom and all that relevant information to us. And now we're ready to just fill in weather, or excuse me, ETs. So now we go, it was left lane, And it was T1, we'll say. In this case, it's not the database he had, but it's gonna, we're going to go up to the 2022 Immokalee. And as soon as I did that, notice the screen in the middle of that, that run entry screen changed to the picture that I told it to for that database. And we'll leave the track at Ardmore. Normal staging. Let me go over what these are. These fields here are how you staged and how bright it was. So you have normal, if you see your child go in deep, make sure you drop that down and say deep, especially if they went red. If it's one bump, you know they go in like normal, but then they took one more bump, just put one bump because that will help later on, especially if there's a red light issue, just so you can see. And how bright it was, we'll drop that list down and let's say it was twilight. Nah, let's just overcast, we'll say, because it's middle of day. Reaction time. Now, here's something cool. Reaction time does not require any decimal points. So, for example, if your child, let's just say, was 36 on the tree, 0.036 is usually how you would enter that, but not in crew chief land. In crew chief land, we want to speed the data entry up. So, we'll say, the reaction time was 36. All I do is type 36 and watch what happens when I press the enter key. It fills in for me 0 0.036. Is that cool or what? So 60 foot, you don't need decimals for that either. So it was a 163.4. It puts the decimal right where it belongs. My 330 was 5.0. 051. I don't need the decimal. It fills it in. And my ET was 
with an eight. I don't need decimals. Mile per hour was 83.79. Now look, I haven't pressed enter yet, but the mile per hour is showing 837.9 miles an hour. So as soon as I press enter, watch, it fixes it. We don't pop up a screen and say, hey, you entered this wrong. We just fix it and move on with our life. We don't bother you. That way, data entry errors are fixed by Crew Chief software. And usually, you don't have to check anything, but always you should, obviously. Just make sure you haven't transposed some numbers, which unfortunately does happen a lot when you're kind of busy at the race. Sometimes people will type in, you know, instead of 790 with an 8, they type 7980, and then they wonder why the prediction's wrong. I get a lot of calls on the weekend for that purpose. So now we go to the dial in or whatever you were targeting. And the ballast added, we'll say was 81.9. Now this one right now, you will need a decimal because it can go a little higher, a little lower, but we do require decimals in the ballast added field. So what's happening right now though, I wanna go and bring your attention to. Over here, there's some, little labels that aren't labeled we call them just they're just labels and the reason that's showing is right this one right there is how long it took to go from 60 to 330 3.417 seconds and this bottom one right there is how long it took to go from 330 to the eighth mile 2.857 seconds down here where i'm putting an arrow at is how far off the dial you were, eight thousandths of a second. And then this one is supposed to be total package. But I'm just working on this total package thing right now, so it's goofed up, but it will be fixed tomorrow or by tonight. I actually have it pretty much ready to go, but didn't have time to recompile everything. So right below that, we'll erase these drawing so they're not so cluttered. Here is your ballast ratio, 0.86 pounds equals a hundredth. And what that means is we find the perfect amount of weight. That's what I'm circling right there. Perfect ballast means what do you think it would have taken to run exactly 7.900 seconds on that run? And according to this, it took 81.212 pounds. You had 81.9 pounds, so we didn't miss it by much, but the perfect would have been 81.2. And that's controlled by the ET and this ballast ratio. Very simple, real, I mean, doesn't take a, it's not rocket science math, but it is some math. So we have that information explained to you. That's what I wanted to cover. All the weather fields in the middle are filled in. Again, if you have a handheld and you're manually typing it, we also fix your, your temperature, humidity, and barometer fields automatically. Like if you type, if it was 59.8 and you type 598 and pressed enter, see it says 598 degrees in the temperature field in the middle here. I guess I should circle what I'm doing. I'm right up here in the middle. If you can't see it, I'll draw an arrow to it. And right now it's showing 598 degrees, which we know is wrong. But as soon as we press enter, crew chief software will say, hey, that's not right and fix it automatically. So all these other fields like wind speed, wind direction, they're all on track temperature. If you know, it, it's all optional stuff. And then the right hand side is completely optional to you enter all your information. And then don't forget to save it. That big save button on the bottom left. Don't forget. I still have a lot of people that forget to save. So I'm gonna save this run and I'm gonna erase the drawings. And there's some... Uh, Don wants to know if calculations adjust if using Celsius. Actually, it's not really set up for Celsius. Um, we use obviously uh, a more common temperature humidity and barometer that are based on American values. Uh, I don't really have a Celsius 
I used to a long time ago had a conversion in there and it's not terribly difficult, but um, your weather stations were probably going to bring over this information in American values. Usually they do. Um, so no, I, I would convert if I were you changing that. I don't know what it would do in Celsius. It's going to give the wrong density altitudes and vapor pressures and all that if you don't have what we expect. I'm not saying that it won't come back where you can pick Celsius or, uh, you know, regular American temperature in Fahrenheit, but uh, right now it's Fahrenheit American values, basically. All right, so we covered, we've entered a run, we've saved it, and that's basically simple. Now, car setup, you'll go to, and you'll fill in this information on the car setup for junior dragsters. Now, those of you that don't have it selected, on the car setup tab, which is this guy right there in the upper left, when it does, click on junior dragster tab and you'll have some stuff set up for junior dragsters. So all of this is optional, but we tell people to fill it all in and save it. And then it will remember every single time from this point forward, automatically filling in the default values for you on every new run from that point on. You can also print an individual run report on the bottom right. There's a print button that when you do, it'll show you a picture. Uh, it'll show you a snapshot of that run with all the ETs, all the weather, and all of this car setup information filled in. Okay, opponent information is the next tab over. Put all opponents in. Always put opponents in. Even if it's a time run, unless they broke, put them in. So that, the same thing applies here on opponents. So if they're 48 on the tree, you just type 48 and we'll fill it in. Their 60 foot was 162.8. They were 5030. And again, it it fixes data entry errors, and they were 788.2 at 84.29, and they were also dialed 790. And when you do that, don't forget to put their opponent number and information in the upper right. Okay, that's all. This is important. I hate surprises, so once somebody does something weird. I make sure to record them. So let's say their 389A is their opponent number, and it fills in their name if you've known it and typed it in before. And here for junior for the time sub simulator, I'll put use junior dragster comments. Um, no comments, but stage style slow to stage, especially if you get one of those people that do that record it because the next time you run them it might be in the final round and you don't want to be surprised make sure that you save the opponent that's save opponent right there make sure it's done and then those of you that have time slip simulator or if those of you want to see it here we go we'll show you how this works time slip simulator when you buy this option You'll have an orange button on both your opponent tab and in finish line manager, which is that tab, you'll have one as well. So this shows you how the race was after the race has been finished. So I click time slip simulator and it will load all of the elapsed times from both my opponent and me. And then I click play here, it'll load up and I'll erase the drawings. And then I just click the simulate button on the bottom right. And it's gonna have junior dragster noise. Uh, you may or may not be able to hear this, but you can turn it off. I'll turn it off so you can hear me talk. You have different modes, and this is really important down here. You can turn the finish line on or off. I'm gonna circle the really important stuff. There's the play button there. The sound is right up here, and the speed is right here. You can turn this into super slow motion. It really is handy. So I'll check the ones that are kind of important. I'll turn finish line off, track position on, and the TV mode on the bottom right, 
I can look at it from inside the car. I can look at the opponent, watch opponent all the way down. I can go overhead view and back to the ESPN camera view, I call it. It says TV mode, but that's what you normally get at TV. So I'll hit play. And then we'll turn the sound on and you'll see it. You can see how it's pretty realistic. And this shows you how the race looked. So I'm going to turn again, if I, I'll hit play and I can change it right in the middle. I can say, look, I can do head checks, you know, uh, like we're really in the car. I can watch the opponent all the way. And this is how it stops right at the finish line. And I can, you know, see how close it really was. So it's got a lot of really cool and useful features. You can give looks. I mean, for a, I use it in the big cars all the time because after I'm done with a run, I'm like, wow, that was really close. And it better look this way at when I replay it. It's a great thing for 80 bucks a year or whatever it is. It's really a heck of a deal. And you'll learn a lot whether you have a big car or not. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot more time on it, but I just want to show you what that was. I get a lot of calls and questions on that. It's not part of Crew Chief. Uh, we take the orders for them. If you want to order it, just give us a call and we'll get you set up for it. Okay, so we got opponent in. Run completion is if you were on the brakes, it will tell you what kind of run you were on. And so it will fill in what it thinks your ET and mile per hour should be. And it'll explain how it arrived at its numbers with all of this data that's on here. Okay. And then on the bottom right, is your formulas for run completion. Because some people want to go off the 330. Some people want to use our new one, which is what we call 330 momentum, which I prefer to use the 330 momentum, but some people, you know, they go off the 330 and that's all they do. You can also go off the 594 foot clock if your track has one. And when we do that, we can actually calculate the 594 for you. 330 momentum is what I prefer to use, but it's up to you. Okay, so run completion, if you want, is a number one importance. Um, otherwise, if you're on the brakes and don't do this, it's going to screw up the predictions for the next run. And I get that call a lot for people that say, well, I went 790, then I went 791, then I went 795. I'm like, well, why did you go 795? Oh, he left it. I said, well, you still left the 795 in the program, and now Crew Chief is very confused why it went so slow. But if you use run completion, it will fix that, and all you have to do, if you agree with the, you either type over the ET in mile per hour that it shows, then you click the accept new ET, and that will help predictions enormously. So that's a, still a very common call I get, and people haven't done run completion and then the next prediction they get is in la la land for a reason okay so we covered that basic stuff now we're coming to the ballast area and we're going to go over this ballast predictions and how they work with a, a simple explanation and then we're going to get into this person's data and go through some stuff so first let's cover what is on the screen here base run is the left column Current is the weather coming from the weather station. The difference is just the simple math, okay? And it's color coordinated. Red is slower, green is faster. And then the ET change column tells you how much ET we think each weather variable is worth. Then once you get done looking at that information, these columns here are a number important. And that is, the ET prediction column, where I'm going to put an arrow on right there, the top rightish area of the screen. That is if you leave the ballast alone. We're going ballast predictions right now. I'll show you the ET predictions in just a second. If the ballast is still at 81.9 pounds, which it gets that data from the bottom where you entered the run, on the bottom left, it says ballast data was 81.9. If you leave 81.9, this is what we think the car is going to run. Now, we haven't done anything with predictions. This is a brand new database with only one run. But if you want to run 790, it's saying 
the right hand side here, if you want to go 790, these are how much weight we think you need. So, and I purposely made these predictions goofy just so you can, we'll show you how it fixes itself. Crew chief number one here is in La La Land, 92 pounds, uh, you know, for this type of weather that we're showing. So let me erase it. Now, if you're ET racing and you're not uh, racing with ballast, then let me bring your attention to, even if you are ballast racing, you can turn it to an ET predictor only by this button in the bottom middle that shows ET only. Let me click it for you and show you what it does. When you click that, it turns these, it gets rid of a whole left side up here of information and just tells you what the ET predictions to the right are going to be. So that's how that works. That's for people that want to call it themselves. They don't want me to tell them how much weight. That's fine. So if you click it back and forth, see how the screen really dramatically changes. So let's go over the rest of these so everybody's on par with what we need to cover. On the bottom right, is a choose formula, okay? That coincides with this area here where it says your chosen formula. This drop down list of formulas affects these two formulas. The vapor pressure formula is halfway or about 50% of that, and your chosen formula is 100% of it. So whatever you choose here affects the bottom two and not crew chief one. Crew chief one, where I just put that giant arrow from the top down, is on its own. It's customizable, but right now it's not set for anything, and that's why the numbers are a little bit weird. So let's go over how this all works. So now on the, we'll erase the drawings and then cover just a few more things and then get going. So here is an important area in the bottom middle is e, no wind in predictions and wind changes predictions. I'm going to put an arrow down to those. You got to be careful when you turn the wind on, we're going to just take those wind changes and do the math. So you got to be careful, especially if you have a trailer weather station and it's windy and you're in Las Vegas, for example, and the wind's going 30 miles an hour, then it drops to 10 and jumps to 28 then drops down to five that'll drive you nuts usually i tell people make your own call because that one instant you get a reading or a page from crew chief and it's 28 miles an hour and you say okay i'm going to take out 18 pounds of weight and then it gets completely calm now now you're way fast so that's a call you kind of got to make when it's really hectic like that when you turn the wind on, it's going to make a dramatic effect, and we'll go cover that in just a second. So if I turn the wind on, see how the predictions change. I just clicked wind changes predictions where that box is still circled. Take the wind out of it, and you can see quite a difference there. So, And the reason it does that, when you turn the wind on, it's looking at these fields that I'm going to circle right now. So when I turn the wind on, the answer for the wind is going to be, or I'm going to draw this arrow right in the middle of the screen there and point down. So watch what happens when I turn the wind on. It says it's seven mile an hour side wind when there was no wind to speak of is worth a lot. Now, I've set these factors to be goofy purposely on the other database when we copied it over, so we'll show you how to fix it. But So you got to be careful with wind. I mean, that's worth nine hundredths, it says. So, again, there's a lot of this stuff. We'll have a new update tomorrow. Those of you that are getting ready to go race, I would highly recommend getting it. So, Okay, so other things on the screen. Again, when it's red, it's slower. When it's green it's faster. Anything in yellow means watch out. Anything we turn yellow is usually the sign, are you sure, a caution, 
like a caution sign because the reason this is in yellow, this is your estimated 60 foot area. And this gets a lot of my customers confused and they forget about this 60 foot area. So the 60 foot your estimated is currently listed. This is a 60 foot predictor if you wish us to do so in the middle of the screen there. So let's go over that so everybody knows whenever you see yellow, you got to be cautionary because of, of that reason. I can drop this list down and pick a bunch of different 60 foot predictors. Or you can just type over the 60 foot what you think. Usually I'll set it at density adjusted 60 foot. If the 60 foot moves in a consistent fashion and the car follows it. If it doesn't, then I wouldn't do that. But you know, humidity adjusted 60 foot, I'll use that a lot if the car is really sensitive to humidity. There's a vapor pressure adjusted 60 foot in there. So it either is going to respond to density altitude or water vapor. And so those of you that responds to humidity, you just use humidity adjusted if it's accurate. You can't make up your mind. You can always go down to your average 60 foot or weight adjusted 60 foot because as you add or subtract weight, 60 foot might change. So just for giggles, I'm going to use humidity adjusted 60 foot. And when I did that, the predictions changed because the 60 foot changed. So it's still in yellow, but it's not nearly as severe as it was before. So before you call me and complain about this, the predictions, make sure that the, your estimated 60 foot in the middle of that screen is not in la la land compared to your baseline. Okay, that's that's the number one thing I want people to check. Second number one thing would be is wind on or off, because that can get you if you're not paying attention. Those of you who gotta pay attention to this that have trailer weather stations from us. All trailer weather stations have a mark on the wind sensor. That mark has to point down track towards the finish line parallel to the track. Every weather station that we sell that has a wind meter, hold on. Every weather station we sell that has a wind meter has that mark. So if that mark is on, pointing the wrong way, you're going to get goofy predictions when you turn the wind on. So double check your wind meter. Those of you that have like a Perform Air Pro, it has a big arrow on the top that points the way we want you to point that down the track. But double check your wind before you turn the wind on. And especially if you're in windy conditions, sometimes the wind, the weather station itself will get moved by the wind and it will no longer be pointing the right way. So, all right, so let's erase the drawings. We've pretty much covered all of this. Um, so we're going to just basically cover some advanced stuff. And the first thing that we got to cover is factors. That's right here. And we're going to go there now and show you some of the factors that control these predictions. So right now we have a set of factors that, um, well, I'll just go over each one, what they mean, but we have two factor screens here. We have in light blue are small weather changes in orange here are large weather changes and it will automatically switch from side to side as it sees fit so we have some sample weather on the predict screen and that's why it thinks it should be in the large weather factors so we have factors for temperature for relative humidity barometer up and down dew point horsepower correction and we'll just make something here. Three, we have density altitude, adjusted altitude, vapor pressure formulas, and grains of water. And then this one is DA to use large factors. That means at about 800 feet, it's going to change to the large weather factor changes, which are in orange. And that is all automatic. So. 
I'm going to just update a couple of these, and they are quite different. So you can have huge weather swings. My wife is sneezing. You can have huge weather swings, and uh, the car won't respond the same way it does on small changes. So I want to make sure we cover what these all do. Not all of these factors will come into play unless you pick a formula based on whatever it is that you see here. So these are the factors. Here's the wind factors in the upper right. And here's the 60 foot factors, which that's an important one there. That's if you lose one hundredth and 60 foot, this one is set to 2.0, which means it's really worth two hundredths when you get down to the end of the track. Weight control factor. Those of you that are not predicting with ballast, you got to be cognizant of this weight control factor. Most juniors are around one pound equals a hundredth but you can put it to wherever you need to. Now, the fuel type used, let me erase these drawings, is right here. And this one's junior dragster on alcohol. If you have a normal junior, you can start there. Some cars, juniors, will work just fine on just regular alcohol factors. So when I do that, it says, do you want to reset the factors? And you say, yes, it changed the factors from junior dragster type factors, at least beginning factors, to a big car on alcohol. These are all changed pretty dramatically. Some of them will at least. So when I get something that's screwed up, when a customer calls and says the predictions are not anywhere near, usually what we'll do is we'll go in and check what fuel type they have selected which is right there, and make sure it matches the car. And if it doesn't, drop a list down, pick the right one, and then reset the factors on the bottom right. That's what this does. And it resets everything back to where we want you to begin. Doesn't mean we'll all we'll end there, but we want you to begin there. So I'm going to hit reset factors. And it will change some of these factors to what it needs to change, which I got to write myself a note here, just a second. And, okay, and so it'll reset them to where we want to begin, basically. So. One of those two usually will work on a junior. Now, really slow junior dragsters have a completely different setup. And that's something that you've got to really be careful of. Some of these cars that are running the 1390 and slower have the little gas engines in them. Uh, they can have some really wild factors when we're all done, said and done. So we'll go through what these all do here in just a second. Let me. Um, yeah, Jeff is saying it says 10 pounds equals 100th in that one tenth, not 100th. 10 pounds equals a tenth. That's what that 1.0 means right there on the bottom right. So, uh, like five pounds would equal five hundredths. You can change that weight factor wherever you want. And this is only if you're not using ballast prediction. If you're just doing ET predictions and you want to adjust your weight yourself, I'll show you how that works here in just a second. So we've covered some of these. Again, the large swings are going to be different usually than the small. And the program will learn separate large swings from small swings. The other thing I want to bring to your attention before we leave this screen is this little checkbox on the bottom middle says show base date and run number. I would suggest checking that on your factors because I'll show you what it does here. On the predict screen, when you check that that I just talked about, it 
puts these fields down here in the bottom middle, which is your base run date, run number, and what lane it was. And some people don't remember where they were, and they start clicking around on the prediction screen. What I mean clicking around means you can switch runs on the prediction screen in the bottom left here, where it says switch to previous run and switch to next. If you have multiple runs in the database, you can switch and compare. Like I do, sometimes I'll compare uh, yesterday morning's first run against today, this morning's first run. I usually will do that. When I predict, I use the same time of day if it's a multiple day event, because usually track prep and all that's the same. So, so let's get to what each one of these formulas does. Just to show you, we're going to have this all screwed up and then we're going to try to fix it. So I'm going to drop this list down on the bottom right and pick Junior Dragster Humidity Formula and see what it does to the predictions. So let's cover what it just did. So I told it Junior Dragster Humidity on the bottom right, which is where we kind of want you to start. And then I want to bring your attention to this ET change column. When I do this, it's looking at humidity and 60 foot differences right there and wind differences right there. If I can artistically draw this. So nothing else is really looked at. Vapor pressure is on the vapor pressure formula, but not everything else has zeros in it. So that's that formula. You see, it doesn't use every single weather variable. Now, if I drop the list down and go temp, barrel, and relative humidity, now it's looking at temperature separate right up here, then relative humidity separate, barometric pressure, and it's wind, and then adjusted altitudes really only looked at for one formula. So now it's changed its mind. Instead of just humidity, it's looking at more than just humidity. So when I pick, like on big cars, my go-to is the DA half barrel, half humidity that I just selected. And now it's not looking at temperature anymore because that's all zeroed. It's looking at humidity and barometer and density altitude. But if I drop the list down again and go to horsepower correction, it's no longer looking at, hold on, let me erase the drawing so I'll redraw these. It's not looking at temperature and all this. It's looking at wind, of course, but all these are zeros up here except for wind. And the only thing that has numbers in it is horsepower correction down here by itself. So that's how these formulas work. They're different canned formulas, I call them. They're mathematical formulas. Some people will follow uh, horsepower correction really well. Some people follow humidity only. And it's up to you to figure that kind of out when you try different formulas. Some, I like certain formulas in the morning and certain formulas in the afternoon. So uh, that's another one of those that we learned as we go kind of thing, because a junior dragster is not going to follow one formula all the time, at least not in my experience. Uh, can you have one for electric juniors? Eric wants to know. Um, you could zero out the factors of whatever it is you're using. I would just use like a single, well, like HP correction and make it a, a almost zero, like 0 0.000001. And then use HP correction and then just use wind. And it won't look at weather variables for those, just wind. So that is how these formulas on the bottom work. That's not, we haven't covered crew chief number one, which is that big arrow right there. So crew chief number one is its own formula for a reason. Those of you that have over the time come up with your own decisions on how you'd like to look at weather, here's what you do with crew chief number one. Let me erase the drawings. And you at, click right, right on your screen right now, uh, it shows 82.4 on that first formula. I'm going to click the 
and it's going to bring up a list and says create your own formula. Let me go over what all this means. This is a custom formula, create your own. For those people that handwrite their formulas over time, you have your own formulas and you can make custom rules here. And custom rules are really cool, but I'll show you that in a minute. So here is every weather variable that we think is important on the left-hand side. And then you assign your own values to the right. So I've worked with enough customers over the years I'm going to erase the drawings here so we can go through with all this. But And they say, okay, I've got, I use density altitude at 200 feet, 225, we'll say. So what I did is I chose density altitude, and I'm going to put a big arrow right to it. And then over here is the density altitude factor and I typed 225 over there, okay? Sorry, my artistic abilities and all that great. And then they say, they look at that and grains of water. So they, here's a grains checkbox right there. And the grains is set at 11.7. .7. So they check that. And all you do is check what you wanna try. And then they said, we go up to humidity and I use humidity at 20%. So I just went up there and typed 20 over the humidity number. Once you're done with however you want to set it up, then you just click the save and return button on the bottom right. And watch, let's just see what happens here. I click save, and now it's dramatically different than the other two formulas, because it's based on different answers. So let's, we'll drop this down and pick DA half barrel, half humidity, and it's not such different there. DA barrel and humidity, we're, you know, then we'll just try a couple here and see, still quite a ways different. So we'll, we'll just go junior dragster humidity, oops, missed it. So the, it's quite a bit different. And what I wanna bring your attention to is, let me draw it with a different color here so it'd be easier to see. Uh, dark green, I guess. I'll, I want to bring your attention to, I'm going to draw a circle and point to what we're going to double click here. This label that says crew chief number one, I'm going to put another arrow down there, right where it says crew chief number one formula. That, what we call label, I'm going to double click on. And what it does is it says, okay, you want to know how the answer was calculated. This is how it did it. So let me get the color right here. So in this case, the base ET was a 790 because you entered that run. It says the humidity is worth 5 thousandth of a second. The density altitude is worth 11 hundredths. The grains adjustment is worth 2.86 hundredths, the 60 foot adjustment is 170 and hundredths, and the wind it says is almost a tenth. So all those together, uh, the new elapsed time is 812. If you leave 81.9 pounds in it, it says it's going to be 812. It's going to be substantially slower than it was before. And I mean, we put some impossible numbers in there, so it could very well be. This is really not an apples and apples setup, but this is how it came to its answer of the elapsed time. And then it took your weight factor and, and adjusted according to that. So once you're done looking at that, you can okay return it. So let's put in some more normal numbers. So it was 59.8, let's say it goes 65. Humidity was 47. 37.7 could be, let's say the barometer goes to 29.78. And then we'll make it a little bit more believable here. So what could happen? So in this case, it's the weather is a little bit more believable, but whether the wind is a little strong. So I'm gonna turn the wind off and you can see it's a big difference. So why is it such a big difference? Let's go back to your factors tab here and we're gonna adjust the wind or the wind factor. 
and take a little out of it because it's maybe a bit too aggressive. It's saying basically a seven mile an hour side wind is worth a lot. And in this case, I purposely made it that way so we could fix it. So the wind factors, if you remember on your factors tab are up here. And what these mean now that we're talking about wind factors alone is headwind ratio is 0 0.006 on this example. That means all you have to do is multiply them by 10. And a 10 mile an hour headwind is worth six hundredths. Very well could be. A tailwind is worth six hundredths also, but you can make these different if you want. If if it's giving you the wrong answer, either raise them or lower them, depending on what you need. And then here, I purposely made this one kind of whacked out just so I could show you. This is a side wind ratio, which is 150% of a headwind, which is pretty aggressive. But I wanted to show you what can happen. People put numbers in these that are quite unbelievable and they get in trouble. I'm gonna override that 150 with a 50. The rest of these say cross head ratio is 95% of a headwind and the cross tailwind is worth 95% of a tailwind. And we leave these to you. We don't automatically adjust them because especially with a junior, that can be very complicated. Once you're done tinkering with these, and there's no wrong answer here, just remember to save the factors down here in the bottom middle, okay? So we're done here for just a second. We're going to save these. If I can erase the drawings. And now when we turn the wind on and off, it's not so dramatic anymore because we've kind of calmed down the wind change. What was almost a tenth is now back down to three hundredths. How do I know this? Is because here is the wind answer. When I turn the wind on, it says it's worth 0 0.0332 in ET when I turn the wind on. So that's why you got to be careful. If that wind is jumping around, it can go a tenth down to three hundredths and it can drive you nuts. So right now, these three answers don't match very well, which is OK. I, I would, you know, with only one run, there's really no way to know. But. We're going to get into other data that might change. So now if I click on this crew chief number one again, and let's just see what we might want to do here. So in this case, we've got what I call a double dipping, which is we've got one water content here in humidity and another in grains of water. So I don't I tell people be careful of selecting vapor pressure, dew point, and humidity. Any one or, and that's it, one or the others, but not all three and not two of them. Usually that'll get you into trouble. So I'm going to turn off humidity, for example. I'm going to uncheck this humidity thing and see if that helps calm that formula down. So I unchecked it and just click save. Didn't really do much. Why didn't it do much? I'm going to double click because the humidity wasn't that big of a deal. The grains isn't that big of a deal. It's only six thousandths there. So the big deal is density altitude is 11 hundredths. I highlighted that. And that's really where the adjustment needs to be made. So I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to click on that again. And density altitude is 225 feet. A lot of juniors, at least I'm mine used to when it got worse, it would get faster. So I put minus 225 in there. I'm negative sign in front of it. Sorry, my cat is throwing things off the desk. You can tell when it wants to be fed, it starts throwing things off desks. So there's questions coming in. Uh, Jeff wants to know if you create a new formula for Crew Chief 1, does it carry over to other databases? It will if you copy the way we showed you at the beginning when you make a new database it will copy over all that information that's what is important about it getting it just right because then when you create new ones it's really much less of a hassle to get it up and running properly so now we've got a little too much here so 89.5 is a little higher i don't mind them being off a little bit until we get you know everything rolling 
but uh, I'm going to uncheck grains and check humidity. And I'm going to put this at minus 500, which I believe is about what the normal is to start with here. And now we're pretty close. So that's why I want you guys to tinker with Crew Chief 1 and see if you like it. You don't have to use it, but it is important. And here's why we haven't covered this part, but custom rules. For juniors and big cars alike, this is something that you will want to know about. Custom rules says, at a certain number of either grains or relative humidity, I can trigger a rule that will adjust the factors accordingly. So if you set a grains rule, mine starts at 116 on my big car. At 116, it falls off the face of the earth. I mean, it just slows down dramatically. And usually around 86% relative humidity, it starts to suffer as well. So those are numbers that I've over time felt had worked pretty well. And when that happens, it will trigger different sets of factors automatically. And those factors, you know, if it takes 8% normally to change the car 100th, it drops it down to 3.95, for example. And this 4.875 automatically will kick in when you have a rule selected. So it's pretty cool how that works because it gets pretty aggressive right when it needs to. So my big car, my junior was that way too at about 80% relative humidity. It started to really slow down dramatically. And so you can set a humidity rule at 80% and use a small factor like 4.8 or 4 or something like that and experiment with it. Again, these are not automatically changed for you because this is crew chief number one is for people that handwrite their formulas over the years and have a certain way they want to do things. This is for them. So try the custom ones, either the grains or the humidity, but not both. You only need one since they're both water content and experiment and it's either going to be very good or it's or it's not but again it's it's an experiment that over years has told me that uh you know it's actually works pretty well and i i think people should give it a at least a an experimentation with it and and try to find out if if it helps so once you're done with crew chief number one, again, you can double click where it says crew chief number one to see how it came to be. Again, I'm gonna circle that where I'm gonna double click even though it's in orange and pink, but there's a little pink arrow there in the top middle of the screen that's where I'm going to be clicking. And it pops up and tells me how it arrived at its answer. So use this screen because you'll want to know how it how it did and eventually this screen is going to be a combination when you click this i'm thinking of another screen over here another tab that will have the predictions and you can change factors and immediately see without having to save it you'll be able to see the same thing on that screen as what's right here I've that's my plan is to add this screen into that crew chief number one screen so you don't have to click on anything else to get the answer you can change a value and immediately see the result the result so again this is a constant evolution crew chief software never stops never so let's cover a couple more things here on the predict screen and then we're going to go back to normal data here wait those of you that are ET racing then and want to change weight, this are the fields there are where you will change weight if you're not wanting us to use ballast. So let's go over that, what it looks like. On a screen set up for that, it would look like this. So if I change the weight to 423 pounds, it said it turned it yellow. And yellow again is caution. It says, hey, that's six pounds worth six hundredths. That 790, whatever it was, is turning into a, uh, a 796, or in this case, 792 there. So again, if you type over the weight, be careful. 
if I change it back, it goes right back to normal. But that's, some people have said, hey, this is in yellow, why? Well, it's because you've typed over the weight or you have some incorrect weight in there. So when you're in ballast mode, you don't need to use this weight field down here at all. So there should be no yellow down the very bottom of that screen. And be careful with the wind on. You know, you just got to make sure that it makes sense to you. I don't leave it on unless it's obvious that it works, you know, that it's closer than, uh, oops, weather's on, just a second, let me turn that off. Zero. Okay, so let me go run entry and predict ballast again. Zero that. Weather is on. Switch to next, switch to previous. Okay, it only has one run, that's why. Okay, so now we're back to the run entry form and we're gonna pull up some more sample data that I've already had set up here. So to pull up a run that you have in there, you can either use these buttons here, the switch runs, and I'm gonna, on the bottom right, or on the upper left, there's some two arrows that do the same thing. So that is the right way to change. I wanna make sure everybody understands that this is the only way to switch runs other than the search menu. You can pull that down and do that as well and search a different way. But most of the time people just wanna go back one run. So when I did that, notice how the screen changed because the main picture changed with it. So, or I can type in 0911, 21 run number two and pull up a run as well if i know the run date and the run number i can type it in or i can use the search menu or those arrow keys that's the right way what i want to caution you against is never ever drop i'm going to put an x through this database area never drop this list down thinking you're searching for runs using this drop down list. If you want to search by database, you can use the search menu up here. Very important because it has the ability to search any way you need to search. But don't drop this down and pick a different database thinking you're switching runs. All you're doing if you drop that list down and pick a different database is picking a different database name for that existing run. And this gets some people so be careful, you make sure that you're looking at the correct database on your screen and use the switch runs to move back and forth, not that drop down list that the X is on. So again, I wanna pull up the correct run. I don't drop down that list. Now there are some cool search fields here that are hidden. And I wanna to bring to your attention for those people that really wanna use Crew Chief to the, the coolest extent. Now here are, I'm gonna circle on the left-hand third of the way down on the left-hand side of the screen, the word database and track. Now, if you wanna search by database, you can just right click on the word database and it'll pull up all the runs at that track, just like that. Again, now here's, let's search by track. I'm gonna right click on track. And if you hover over the word track, it says right click to search by this track. If I hover over the word database, it says right click to search by this database. So I click right there and there's all the runs at that track. Whenever you do a search, your averages are down here. Average for ET, average um, 60 foot, average ET, average mile per hour. I gotta write myself a note. T. Okay, so there's some options for this screen as well down here where you can turn on or off certain fields and reorder certain fields, but we're not gonna really get into that right now. So, so to pick a run, a different run from here, you just double click on whatever run it is that you wanna pick. You double click on it, that run appears, just so you know how that works. So we have an actual run here. 
This is from 9-11-2021, run number two. It's a 781 run, and we're going to try to make sense of this to try to help this customer figure out predictions. This is a different database, and it's going to have some slightly screwed up stuff in it right now because I kind of screwed it up purposely to fix it properly. Some answers will never appear. You know, crew chief software is only as good as the car and the driver. So we're going to cover how we double check a driver and data entry before we go back to predict here. So how we do that is a very important screen on the bottom right called the event logbook button. You can also get to it up the upper middle menus called log view, where I can pick different runs versus this weekends. I can choose different runs out of sequence, a bunch of other things up there. <clears throat> but the event logbook button is used to identify both data entry errors and driver error. So I'm going to click event logbook, and here's a whole bunch of runs that appear on that database, not any other database. So if you have multiple juniors, this logbook will be whatever juniors on the screen. And what we're looking for is very important here. Crew Chief software can help you immensely with both your driver and your tuning just by looking at this logbook screen. So let's go over a couple of things. Stats button on the upper left, that will give you the averages for both lanes. I'll click it real quick just to show you how cool it is. It doesn't really mean anything unless you've got enough, a number of runs. We have uh, six runs here, so I'm gonna click stats. And there it's going to give me the averages for both lanes. So here's the averages on the left side and the averages for all the right side runs. It's pretty cool though. And it can identify both reaction time differences because this on average is 32 on the left and 17 on the right, pretty big difference. 60 foot, 162, 164, another big difference. 782 average ET, 785. 82 40 mile an hour, 82.7 miles an hour. So there's some statistical irregularities here between lanes. And I see this a lot with juniors. So the average DA is 2695 and 2700 over here on the right. Not a big difference. Average horsepower correction was 105.95 on the right, 106.85. A little bit of a horsepower correction difference. Wind speed and wind directions are down here. So we're looking at, there's some differences in the lanes. So what does that tell me? Well, when the average reaction time is quicker and the 60 foot is slower, eh, could be a staging difference, but I don't, it doesn't really appear that, that, because when your light is better, you're normally staging a little deeper and that's gonna ruin your 60 foot a little bit and your ET. And this appears that in the right hand side, this person or this child is staging a little deeper in the right or the timing system is just a little tighter in the right lane than it is in the left. And we can tell that because the average reaction time in the left is 0.032, but the 60 foot's quicker. So if you're shallow, you're gonna get a little slower reaction time and a little quicker ET. And that's kind of what we're looking at here. I use the stats button to identify that on a grand scale, so to speak. And on the bottom right of this is a trimmed and normal. If I click trimmed, what it does is it takes the high and the low out of the averages. Now we don't have enough runs on the left to average this with the high and the low killed out of it, but on the right we do. So the average reaction time is 0.0245 and the 60 foot goes to 164.2. Now a normal average is 164.4 and 17 light. Not a big difference. So if we don't see a huge difference, then you know the car is fairly consistent, the driver is fairly consistent. But this kind of tells me that the right lane is perhaps a little bit tighter than the left. So when that happens, you gotta be careful of predicting and getting put into the other lane and realizing that you're sick, you know, because of how the tight 
the lanes are. You may have to dial slightly different than the prediction shows in one lane over the other because it's a little tighter in the right than it is in the left. And that this screen will help you identify that. So the other thing this screen does to help in predictions is these little numbers in between the columns are the differences. Okay, I'm going to circle these and we'll cover them. Horsepower correction, grains of water, and then the bottom is split time intervals. You're 60 to 330, 330 to eighth, eighth to thousand, oh, no eighth of thousand here, but those are your split intervals. So the differences in reaction time was 67 quicker, 11 quicker on reaction time. That's what that means between the two runs. The difference in eighth or 330 ET and eighth mile ET. Difference in weight, difference in perfect or optimal, difference in density altitude, difference in relative humidity. Humidity was 12% better between those two runs. Is that the, the reason the car ran that quick? Hard to say right now. So then we go to the third run between the second and the third, and now we're 36 slower on reaction time, 22 slower on 60 foot, 41 and 43. We added 10 pounds though, so we should have had a difference. See how cool this is? This shows me a snapshot and tells me what I'm looking for. Only one grains of water was different, so that's not a trigger point. 10% better humidity, there we were 11% better humidity. So are we finding a, a constant here? Maybe. So here is the difference between these two runs, 34 slower reaction time, 27 slower 60 foot, 54 slower and 8 hundredths. That doesn't really correlate as well because you just changed weight by three and a half pounds but the DA got better by 1,064 feet. And on a junior, when the DA gets better, sometimes that doesn't really help the car perform any better. Well, the big one I see here is the 31% difference in relative humidity. So there possibly could be a very important humidity adjustment that we have to make to the predictions. So this logbook screen will answer a lot of your questions. You can even print it on the upper left and it prints a really cool logbook. So let's go back and try something really cool here. I know it's late and you guys have been with me a long time here, but I'm gonna go back to the predict screen and we're gonna fix a couple of things if we can answer them. Let me erase the drawings. So here we have the form of the predictions. And I wanna bring your attention to when I came here, I didn't do this, but you notice down the bottom, if, I, I, if you remember, I told you anything yellow is look out, there should be no difference in there. Now, we allow the weight to change without telling you up to a certain number. And so it turned itself red here because the base weight at 407 pounds is different than the weight that was typed in from the previous database. So you gotta be cognizant of this and look for yellows. So we're gonna fix the weight so that's not the issue here. So I just type over the current weight and put it back to 407, it'll get rid of all that. So let's go over this. Now, if I still have your attention, let me just see how many people are here. Yeah, yeah, there's still a lot of people here. So this is a really important area of crew chief to verify predictions. So how do we verify predictions? We have a run on the screen that I want to test against other runs. So we know the prediction missed, but we want to see if a different formula might have helped. How do we do that? I want to bring your attention to upper left. It says base run right there. I'm going to draw an arrow to it. Why is this important? Well, we want to take this run out of the equation, act like it has not been run. And to do that, we simply right click where it says base run. And let me walk you through this real careful because this is very important. I right click where it comes, says base run and what it did is it went and 
placed all of the current weather has was changed now to the same as the baseline. So all of that is transferred over. And in the bottom middle of the screen, if you have a trailer weather station, it turned the weather off. I'm going to draw an arrow to it. And why it did that is so if you have a weather station hooked up, we don't want it interfering with what we're about to do. So we disable it, temporarily disable it. And we temporarily take this run out of the database. It's still visible right now, but it won't be in a split second. It doesn't mean it's gone. It just means it's temporarily invisible to the program. Why are we doing this? Well, we're going to act like the run hasn't been made yet. But we have all of the current weather from that run filled in under current. And all we have to do is go down the bottom left and switch to the run previous to it or usually it's just previous either one or two runs and i'm just going to go back to the run that was on the screen when we tried to do prediction i switch to previous run on the bottom left and now it fills in the bot on the left hand side the base run has been changed to the run previous to the run we just want to analyze yet all the current weather is fixed from when they actually went down the track. I want to say that again. All of the ETs and weather are filled in here. The 60 foot is known. The wind, the wind speed and wind direction is known. The temperature, humidity, and barometer are known. And what it's, we're trying to do is predict this run, get it a little more close because it was very far off before. So we. We've made a few changes. I made a few changes to the factors and to, to experiment a little bit. But I want to show you how close Crew Chief is now with just a few little tweaks here and there. The first thing that concerns me on this, though, is the difference in the 60 foot. So I'm going to bring that. The 60 foot is a lot better. Okay, the 60 foot is a lot better and the humidity has dropped 11.7. I mean, okay, so if humidity is critical to the performance of this car, then we need to use a humidity adjusted 60 foot and see what it would do in that drop down list there. But first, we're just going to try a couple of things. One, we're going to turn the wind on in the prediction on the bottom middle here and see if it gets us closer to the 86 pounds that we need it. Let's turn the wind on. It's 84.8 on the vapor pressure, 84, so about 85. It's actually very close right now. And we haven't really, I've done a little bit of tinkering. So the person's data that has this, if he's on here, you'll be able to get what I've done back if you'd like. There's nothing major. I've changed a few of your factors. That's about it. So, but I put this a little too high. So let's drop that down to 75. So all I'm doing is just tinkering with a few things and we're going to experiment and say, okay, what fixes this? So I'm going to drop the list down and go to junior dragster humidity. Didn't really help. Go with DA half barrel, half humidity, nothing special there. Temp barometer and relative humidity, pretty close. That's actually fairly close. And again, make sure you, when you do change it, you look at the ET change column and see what's changed. So right now, we're three and a half hundredths for humidity. And that's probably pretty close because of 12 percent basically temperature's worse but it's still quicker so we've got some wind that the wind isn't a huge difference five mile an hour or so but is that enough four thousandths of a second kind of hard to tell but that 60 foot it's saying the 60 because it knows the 60 was uh, one quicker which equates to about two down track that's probably part of our issue. 
the 60 foot got a lot quicker. So I'm going to erase the drawings and we're going to experiment a little bit more here. Drop the list down, go to humidity adjusted 60 foot. And it came up with an answer that was damn near perfect for the 60 foot. What I did is I just chose humidity adjusted 60 foot and it told me the 60 was going to be 16179, which was very close to what it actually was. So humidity adjusted 60 foot on a junior is very important. So the side wind may or may not have helped us. It's kind of a hard call, but if I'm only a pound off, the vapor pressure form is showing 84.7 and I want to be around 86, it's not bad, especially if the wind is, is changing. You know, it's changing fairly remarkably. So what can we do to make it a little bit closer though? So again, we'll go back to the factors here. This is if we want to tinker ourselves, because sometimes on a junior, that's the best way to do. The humidity is down to 3.35, which is probably pretty close to being right. So I don't think we need to do anything there. Uh, just a second, I want to write myself a note. Okay, so we really don't want to lower the humidity number any more than that. Sometimes you just can't put it right on the number. There's just too many variables that we can't see. But I wanted to show you where you could find the answer to some of this stuff. So let's, if we uncheck density altitude, we can see what crew chief number one would do. And in this case, it didn't really help. So. We can put that back. Humidities, we'll drop it to four and see. Again, we're really close, but we're not exact. And sometimes that's the best we can do. Maybe there's something outside of that, how the child staged on this run might have been just as important as everything else that we're trying to do with the weather. So what I wanted to show you is how you manually tinker with it. And then now I'll show you how crew chief software uses calculate ratios to try to come up with some answers on its own as well. Now calculate ratios is if it follows a trend that we can identify. So let's go and cover this screen because I know it's you guys have been here a while. Calculate ratios has three areas. We have crew this one two, three, okay? We start one is whatever run was on the screen when we went into calculate ratios, which in case, in this case was 9-11 number one. All of the other runs are in number two. I get this call a lot, so pay attention here. People call me and say, hey, I made three runs, but only two are in the number two area. And I have to explain to them that we can't have the same run in number one in number two because you can't compare one run against itself. So if you only have three runs, only two are going to be in number two, and the last one is going to be in number one. Okay, just so you understand that we take that run out of the database, or not the, excuse me, out of this list here because you can't compare number one to itself. So how does this work? So we have number one filled out. So all we have to do is double click on one of the runs in number two. How do we decide? Well, in a big car, I only pick within five to six thousandths of a second difference in 60 foot. And that 60 foot area is right here. So when you're choosing runs, find something close to the base run for 60 foot. And don't try to do this in super windy conditions either. So it doesn't help to try to analyze a run when wind is swirling. So let's just see, I'll double click on the first one. And let's show you what crew chief is telling us. It says analyzed on the left-hand side now, and it turns that whole line yellow. 
Then if we have a ballast prediction, it'll pop up and says, should we update the ballast ratio? So it says the ballast was only changed by one pound. And that's over here. It was 70.5 and it went to 71.5. So we only changed it one pound and we corrected the ET, it only changed 13 thousandth of a second. So that equates, instead of a ratio of 0.86 to 1, it thinks the ratio is 1.39 pounds equates to every 100th an ET. And it says, should we update the ballast ratio? Yes or no? Well, this is a big change, so I'm going to say no right here. I'm going to put an arrow there. Because, yeah, there's a big change, and mathematically it says it should be 1.389 pounds equals 100th. But in reality, it could be staging, could be wind, could be 60 foot, and we need to evaluate a few more things before we say yes or no. I'm going to say no, and I'm going to erase the drawings, and then I'm going to bring your attention to the middle between one and two are some checkboxes. Okay, these checkboxes, especially no wind ETs, if there's a, some wind, not too much wind, and adjust for 60 foot. Those checkboxes are commonly checked as a test. So I'm going to adjust for 60 foot checkbox. And when I do that, it says, okay, we get something. We get what's going on here. So it says here that you changed it one and the selected ET was within five thousandth of a second of what it should have been based on the 60 foot change. In that case, we're not going to adjust any factors and we're gonna leave everything alone. No changes are necessary. So it does not want to change the, the ratio. And I gotta write myself a note. Okay, so that's how we verify that crew chief already thinks the factors are correct because this screen pops up and says, hey, we don't really want you to change anything. We think everything is fairly close or as close as we think we can get it. So don't monkey with it. And when I do that, when I say, okay, then another thing happens. If it would have allowed me to, it would have said either update small factors or update large factors on the bottom right. In this case, it doesn't want me monkeying with it. So it it disabled this command button, we call it, on the bottom right and says, you can't touch this. You can click it all day long, but it, nothing will happen. And that's a sign that you want. That means that everything is going fairly smooth, that you're fairly close on predictions with the factors being correct, that we don't really want you to do anything else with it. You're done here. Now you can pick another run and try and see if you picked a bogus run or a run that wasn't right, it may have given you really weird numbers. Stay away from really weird numbers and say no if it tries. So I'm gonna double click another one and it says, no, we're okay there. But this one says a ballast Let's show you what happened here. I'm going to erase the drawings and show you. It says, should we update the ballast ratio? And let's see what it says. We changed 11 pounds between these two runs. And the ET changed by about eight hundredths. That equates to 0.726 pounds for every hundredth an ET. Should we update the ballast? Well, we're at 0.86 right now. And it's saying it needs to be a little lower. Again, I'll say no because I'm not confident that 0 0.72 is exactly the right answer. It's not my car. But if, if 0.86 is too much and we start pogo sticking, what I call pogo sticking, which is one high, one low run, you go 788, then 792, the ratio is too high and you can lower it. And this would make more sense, you know, going from 0.86 of a pound to 0.72, 
isn't a huge amount, but sometimes it's all that really needs to be done. I'm still going to say no, because I, I'm going to give this guy his data back once we're done here. And that's a pretty wild swing. Not terrible, but somewhat. I'm going to stop here for a second and answer some questions. Okay, Jesse wants to know when it'll be available. The webinar will be available probably tomorrow on our YouTube website, on the YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and type in Crew Chief Software or Crew Chief Pro, it will pull up all of our webinars that we've had lately, and you'll be able to watch the Junior Dragster one by tomorrow. Thank you for coming, Jesse. I apologize it's went so long, but there's a lot to cover here. So as you can tell. So usually what I would caution people against is we usually tell you to stay the same day. So this is 9-11. The ones I analyzed were from 10-01. Could be okay if it's the same track, could not be okay if it wasn't. So hope you learned something, Jesse. All right. Um, so I'm going to unanalyze these by double clicking again and taking them off and then going back to 911 run number three or two. Let's see what happens when we do that. So when we do this, it tells, tells me that six and a half pounds were changed and the ET changed by eight hundredths. And now we're back to 1.32 pounds. And that's with the 60 foot adjusted from 161 to 163 almost. So I'm going to say no again to this because 1.36 seems a little high, even though it mathematically crew chief is right. It doesn't mean that the run is right. So let me uncheck 60 foot and it's, yeah, it's 60 foot was very important. So let's try run number three. It's saying about the same answer. It said 17 pounds was changed and it's a 1.359. Is it possible it needs more weight? Yeah, it is very possible, especially if you're constantly fast or constantly slow. You know, it, it probably needs a different ratio. So we can do that, but I want to see the next run where we change it that much and it agrees again. If it doesn't, then then we're going to be running into issues. So I'll say no to that. But again, you can we can tinker with it and get an average ratio too. Adjust for 60 foot, 1.48, 1.32. So my average ballast ratio is still 136. It could be the right answer. But many times you know that one pound equals a hundredth or somewhere in that vicinity. I don't want to jump to 1.4, even though it mathematically sounds more accurate to crew chief, doesn't mean it wasn't some other fluke involved there. The other thing you got to worry about is when you change weight, you're changing your 60 foot. So sometimes that can be a pretty dramatic change that maybe crew chief will get a little too amped up about. But if you like, you know, if it comes up with some normal factors, everything looks pretty good, you can use this update small factors or update large if there's a big swing and click it. And it will go in and change your factors to what we want. But I caution people against that. Usually you don't need to do this. You might want to change your ballast ratio, but you probably don't need to change your weather variables. The only way to find that out, the right way, in my opinion, is to make three runs where all you do is leave the weight alone and just see what the weather does, and then make three runs where you change it 10 pounds at a time and see if there's a consistent change in your ET based on that 10 pounds. Yes, it, you'll use up an entire day of testing to try to figure this out, but it's certainly helpful for your racing program if you have a general idea what this all means. And it'll help crew chief try to figure out what it should have been. 
So those are some of the advanced areas we go with crew chief. Uh, it doesn't mean that every time we give you a prediction, it's going to be 100% perfect, but it ought to be close. And if it's not, I'm hoping that we've given you some tools and to investigate. Now, from time to time, I'll look at people's data. So if you've got a junior that simply isn't predicting well at all, then email me at crewchiefpro50 at yahoo.com, and I'll send you a list of files I want you to send me on an email. And I can review your data and perhaps make some changes to Crew Chief as I see that it could do a better job. Or I can just tell you, here, change these factors and try again. That being said, I want to show you one other thing that's kind of cool. And we haven't covered this, but we are. This column that says current. Anything in that current column, you can right click on to do an instant search. So if your car is very sensitive to humidity, just right click on the humidity value. See, it says 37.7. I'm going to right click on it. And here's all the runs similar humidity instantly. It does an instant search of all the runs that are similar in humidity. And this humidity column is where I'm, I will draw a line around here real quick for you. There's the humid, it says humid, because we don't have a lot of screen space, but everything plus or minus probably two points of humidity. And if you can see that every one of these runs, there's your ETs, you know, some of these are 790 cars, some are 890. So maybe there's some that help, some that won't. Now on the bottom right, there is a checkbox that says show current database only. So if I check that, it gets rid of all the 890 stuff. And now we're down to one run that's the same database, similar humidity. Could be the run that's on the screen already, but some some of you with a lot of runs, you might knock down a hundred in the list down to four doing this the right way. And that will help to identify whether the prediction it's about to give you is accurate. So if it says that you need, hold on a minute, it said on this run that the optimal was 86 pounds. If it's predicting somewhere close to 86 pounds, then you should feel fairly good about the prediction you're getting. If it's coming up with 78 pounds and it should, and historically it's needed 80 something, then something's not right in the predictions. So that's how you verify the predictions versus the historical performance of the car. So once I'm done here, I can either pick a different baseline run right here or cancel out in the bottom right. So again, any, when I get to a track, they're usually I'll just right click on the current DA and here's all the runs with similar DA. And then from there I can decide, okay, well, here's the same track. Uh, it's, it took, you know, and this has got some wildly different cars in here, I think, but uh, this one says that at that DA it takes 86 pounds. So we're gonna start at 86 pounds and see what it runs. If we're only a pound or so off on there, we can fine tune it, but maybe we don't need to. So I'll open it up to any questions people have, because I know we've covered a lot and I appreciate that there's still a lot of you here. I don't know if they're all present, but a lot of people are definitely on the webinar. So if you have questions, I'll stop here for a minute and let you ask them. Again, you'll be able to watch this in its entirety. And there's a lot of things I haven't been able to really cover because quite frankly, I could I could go another hour and really cover some more stuff, but I lose most people after about 45 minutes. So you guys have been with me for almost two hours now. So I'm impressed. Uh, people are saying, thank you, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot, thank you, I'm glad you guys did. For the most part, uh, we're basically done. Uh, 
If there's something else you would like me to cover, I will definitely wait around and uh, go over anything you may want to go over. Um, those of you that want to leave, you're more than welcome. I just hope that you've got a new appreciation for all the things that Crew Chief software can do. And keep in mind that this is you know, about juniors, but everything still applies to the big cars in a very similar way. So what's cool about this is once you age out of a junior and get a big car, you don't really have to relearn anything. You throw a couple of switches in the program and now it's a big car version. And the databases and everything else, it's a heck of a lot easier to dial a big car than juniors many times because a low compression engine on alcohol is not real friendly to predictions usually. So the fact that you guys can get as close as you are is really impressive and a testament to the time and effort that's put into these cars. I know after 14 years of juniors and when took all my hair pretty much, they were very enjoyable when you did well. You know, but they were very sensitive too. They were extremely sensitive to how cylinder head temperatures were and how the child staged. There could be four hundredths difference in your ET just simply by how they stage. So you got to be cognizant of that, not overanalyze the prediction sometimes when that happens. What fuel type would you select when using premium pump gas? That's a really good question. I would probably just start on race fuel. If you're running on pump gas, I would just start race fuel. And I would probably go to your factors tab, drop this list down and pick race gas, and then change some of these factors. Like usually on a junior on gas, it's about a hundred feet per hundredth. So a hundred feet of DA, I would change this one to like maybe a hundred to 120 pounds. Uh, I worked with one junior a while back that was, I want to say, 85 feet of DA change that little gas engine a hundredth, but I'd start at a hundred and temperature wise about 1.25 degrees, humidity three to 4%, barometer up and down seemed to be 0 0.12, 0 0.11 was fairly close. Um, but yeah, you can, you can make a couple of runs on that setup and see how it works. But, um, most of those little gas engines were pretty sensitive to air, especially humidity and density altitude. So um, the program should learn relatively quick on a, if you're not trying to add a lot of weight to them, if you're just leaving the weight alone and doing ET predictions, uh, it should snag it fairly fast. After a couple of passes, you can use calculate ratios and let it reevaluate too. So. But after some runs on that little gas engine, if you want me to look at them, I'll be happy to. Because I just want the program to improve. And a lot of times it comes down to me looking at people's data and saying, wow, I could have done a lot better job. You know, here's a, a much better setup for that particular combination. So, well, we're going on about two hours now. So if you have any other questions, feel free to answer or ask and I will answer. Um, I'll hang around and learn a couple of minutes. And I appreciate everybody coming. I hope you learned something from this. You're welcome. Thanks for coming, appreciate that. I'm just reading off people's comments here, so. Yes, wind can have a dramatic effect. Yes, that's right. Well, I'm glad you learned about the 60 foot area. That's something a lot of people don't even see and they've been looking at the prediction screen for 15 years. Again, that newest update will be available tomorrow and this will be available to download tomorrow. So. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Wade. Thanks, Mark. John, appreciate it. All right, well, if there's nothing else,
I will go ahead and shut off. Terry McMillan, I'll be darned. Thank you for coming by. Thanks, Jacob. Appreciate it. Robert, thank you. Sue, thanks. Yes, I will look at your data. If you just email me, I'll take a look at it. Sure. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and shut it down. You guys have a good evening.